Hey y'all, welcome back to Right at the Wire. Well, it's Le Comte weekend at Fairgrounds, and for many, the beginning of the Derby Trail. We've got a really good race to take a look at, so let's dive into it. So this is the Le Comte Stakes. It's one of our first uh, Derby preps, and for a lot of people, this starts the Derby Trail. It is a grade three run at a mile and a sixteenth for three-year-olds at the Fairgrounds, and it's the last race on the card, and this looks to be a pretty good one. Um, if we look at the field, you see we've got some familiar faces we've seen before and a couple of new shooters uh, to a degree. Um, I'd have to say that, uh, you know, our prime players here are uh, Track Phantom, Nash, and uh, um, those would be the, uh, the, the primary players and the odds reflect that. But uh, you do have uh, Tizzy Indy, who's a new player, as well as... Uh, Lat Long, who just broke his maiden. And Awesome Road has been on the stakes trail uh, for a couple of the uh, two-year-old preps. And he's a Brad Cox trainee, so of course that gives immediate attention. If we take a look at how we're going to uh, play this, uh, we'll just go through them one at a time. And you, you see, as we do, that we break them down by running style. And you'll note that if you use Brisnet, a, couple of the, a lot of these are, are listed as E's. But I think in watching their races, uh, we can alter their, uh, their running styles, and they'll probably will be uh, reflected after this race, just in what I've seen from the races they've run. We'll go through them one at a time. Next level uh, gave uh, uh, Track Phantom um, a little bit of pressure uh, in their last race in the gun runner and uh, just wasn't up to it and fell right back. Uh, couldn't really find any reason for it other than I think he was just overmatched. Uh, his races reflect uh, a horse who's getting a little better, but uh, I just don't think he matches up speed wise. And so uh, I expect some token pressure from him, but uh, I think Track Phantom likely is going to have a very similar situation that he had in the gun runner and then he'll pretty much be on the lead by himself uh, so track phantom is is doing everything right he's progressing just the way you should he's getting better as the class levels increase and uh being alone on the lead uh may be enough in this race awful hard to close on the wire in a two-turn race at the fairgrounds but this one seems completely capable and i consider him to be a prime player in this race if you go back and watch that gun runner, uh, Nash came in with a lot of hype and uh, justifiably so. His maiden race, he got him the lead and he just blew that field away. Uh, I noticed in watching the gun runner, uh, there are, you know, for you can say he didn't have any excuses, but it honestly looked like a learning experience. I think Brad Cox is trying to get this horse to rate and. Uh, while he could have been a little closer to the pace, I think, uh, he's trying to get him to, uh, to rate off runners. That's what it looked like to me. And in particular, uh, in the stretch, he didn't look like they were asking him for anything uh, at all. And I, don't, I can't recall seeing Florent Giroux go to the whip with him. So I have to believe that this is one of those uh, things where Cox was saying, we've got to teach him how to rate, so let's do that. Uh, he still ran third, and I think that gives you an idea of the kind of talent this horse has. Um, so I think uh, coming into this race, he should be schooled pretty well and is going to rate off of track phantom uh, in this race. And his natural speed, if he learned his lesson well, should take over in the stretch. And uh, I think Nash has a pretty good shot at taking this one down. Uh, Tiz Indy just isn't good enough. Uh, that's the bottom line. He hasn't shown anything to tell me that he's going to make any type of progression forward. Lat Long is a uh, Kenny McPeak trainee, and as we know, with his uh, two- and three-year-olds, they get progressively a little better each time. And he did just break his maiden after a couple of tries, and he's had some pretty good company he's run against. But the thing is, that last race wasn't very uh, classy. Uh, it wasn't a terribly good race, and y yes, he won it, but he didn't do it in such a way to tell me that he's ready to take a, a monster leap forward and be a major player here. And I think speed-wise, he's a little lacking right now. I might get better as we go along, but right now I don't think he's uh, he showed me very much. 
Uh, awesome Road looks like kind of a project to me. Uh, one of the things I've noticed about him is he changes leads a little late, and um, he's another one that uh, you know was up on the lead for his maiden win, and uh, he did uh, compete very well, and he did draw off at the end. Uh, but his next two races have not been uh, terribly stellar. But I will note this. He seems to be getting better. And I think it's a question of they're schooling him. They're teaching him how to rate. And it looks to me like he's learning his lessons pretty well. Uh, the last race in particular, he made uh, a nice move at the turn. And he just didn't have enough late. And that might be a product of uh, not being used to uh, being behind runners. And uh, it may have sapped a little energy. But I think this horse has some talent. Um, and if you look at it uh, from the perspective that they've been educating him, I think with another move forward, which is very possible with a Brad Cox horse, uh, that he could factor in this race. I'm not sure he's ready to, uh, to win at this level yet. But I think he's on his way. He's getting there. At 8-1, to one, I think he offers some pretty good value. and I think he's a use in this spot. Uh, Ethan Energy, I really liked his last race. Now, it was his maiden. That's true. But it was the way he did it. He was very professional. Uh, he swept out at the top of the turn and uh, had plenty of energy late. Drew off nicely. He got a really good running style for the fairgrounds and generally for derby preps. Um, I think with another move forward, this one could be very competitive here. And um, I see him as having, uh, I, you know, they list him as a closer. And I think he's more of a stalker right now, a mid-pack kind of horse. And that might be the right kind of style here. Because if you do get Track Phantom and Nash uh, locking horns at the top of the turn, uh, they may cancel each other out. And that'll leave Ethan Energy making a nice move late. So, uh, at four to one, I'd like the price to be a little better, but I think he's one that uh, looks to be heading in the right direction, and I think he's a player here. Ken Group, uh, you know, the, of course the question is, well, why was he on turf? Why did he run in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile on turf? Well, maybe that's a better surface for him, but he's still very capable on dirt. He's shown that. He had some good company in his dirt efforts. And so I don't see that as being an issue. What I do wonder about is if he has enough on the top end uh, to close this one out. And, and I don't know uh, necessarily if he'll have enough pace uh, to make him a factor in this race. So I think he'll certainly be running late and he will be likely all alone in the back, I think. Uh, if not, he may be joined by Tizzy Indy. I, I'm not sure, but... Uh, I think he's a, a horse that you can use for the exotics, but I don't know that he's got enough uh, for the top end to win this. So if we look at our wagering strategy, I like Nash. Uh, I think he just has naturally enough speed to win this race. And if he can just put enough pressure on track Phantom, uh, then perhaps he can get the better of him in the stretch. And uh, I think that's the key to this race, is if Track Phantom gets out on the lead all alone, uh, he may be tough to catch. But I think Nash has demonstrated that he does have the natural ability, and if he learned his lesson in the gun runner, then I think he could be awful dangerous here. And I'm going to say that, he's, uh, uh, that he'll learn his lesson. Got Brad Cox training him, no reason to believe he won't. And with his natural speed, I think he can win this race. So... Nash would be our key to win. Now, in terms of betting, it, you know, if you can get Ethan Energy with better than four to one, tall order to be sure, then I would throw a win in place down on him because I think he's a sleeper uh, to a degree in this race. Um, he's, you know, he is a maiden going into a stakes race, but he looks to me like he's got a lot of natural ability and having that kind of running style. Uh, may make him effective, and he's going to certainly get the jump on uh, Can Group, and, and I don't think Can Group's good enough, as I mentioned. So our three candidates to win this are Track Phantom number seven, Nash number two, and Ethan Energy number four. So we would key, uh, We first of all, we're going to have a couple of boxes. We're going to box Nash and, <coughs> excuse me, Track Phantom, and we're also going to box 
uh, Ethan Energy and Nash. And we'll stagger that based upon the odds. Obviously, if you get a track phantom Nash exa uh, exacta, then we would want to have uh, a fair amount invested in it to get uh, maximum return. Uh, but I think you can also get a good exacta with uh, Nash and Ethan Energy. So uh, I'm not big on boxing a whole, a whole lot, but in this case, I think you can stagger it and um, it may max out your return. Then we'll key box with Nash and uh, Track Phantom and Ethan Energy. So uh, then we've got a chance of doubling up. And uh, if we stagger our wagers and it, everything comes out right, particularly if we get Track Phantom and Nash 1-2, then uh, we get a good return on our investment there. Then Trifecta, we're going to key Nash with 4, 5, 7, and 8. And we'll key Nash for first and second. And then uh, we'll just do a straight exact wheel with uh, Nash on top with four, seven, and second, and then four, five, seven, eight, and third. And of course, you can, you know, you can go do a superfect if you'd like to using those same horses. But uh, it's, um, uh, I think these are all the, uh, the pretty sturdy and uh, solid bets uh, for a race. And, you know, we have to remember the three year old, so you just don't know. But, uh, I think, uh, I think Nash, to me, looks like the horse to beat uh, with Ethan Energy and Track Phantom being the prime, uh, other prime win candidates. So that's the Lacombe Stakes. Looks like it's going to be a good one. Uh, really looking forward to seeing that Nash and Track Phantom showdown. But Ethan Energy is an upstart, and he could upset the apple cart for sure. Hope our analysis helps you with your own wagering strategy, and I wish you the best of luck as always. We will have more postings concerning Fairgrounds card on Saturday, including the late peak five, so be on the lookout for that. And if you do like content like this, of course, please like and subscribe, and thanks to all of you for your support. That's it from here. I'll talk to you soon, and until then, be well.